What's up? Okay, what's up with you, man? What's going on with you? Shout out to those listening right now. This is the People's Paradise Podcast. Thank you for listening again. As you can tell by the title description, as you can tell by reading the title description, as also you can tell by the obnoxious noise in the background and the sweaty people around me. I'm actually recording this live in the gym right now. Just because I'm surprised. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to the studio today. I got to the studio, but literally somebody had it checked out for like... Well, somebody had the studio checked out like two times ahead of me, so I couldn't. I couldn't get in there. And, I couldn't get in there and do the magic. I couldn't get in there and do the magic that I wanted to get. Hold on, let me get this. Let me get this set up. Let me get this set up. Thing. I, uh, I couldn't get in the studio. I couldn't get in the studio and get on the microphone professionally and get to talk about what I was going to talk about. I wanted to talk about the modern movie review, and I also wanted to do. I also wanted to do something with you talking about. You know, there's some other opinions about what's going on in the world, what's going on in the culture. Um, but since I'm here right now in the gym talking to you right now, while I'm sweaty, drenched in sweat, my abs shining and stuff like that, since I'm just a walking ball of sexiness and attraction right now. I want to talk about a kid movie. A freaking kid movie. While I'm surrounded by a bunch of sweaty women and men right now, I want to talk about a kid's movie. And that kid's movie is God dang Moana. And shout, out to, and shout out to the main actresses in the movie Moana. Ali Car- Ani Cravalo. Ani Cravalo. Shout out to Ali Cravalo. And shout out to my man, the man with the plans. The Walking Titan, Dwayne Johnson. Shout out to both of them. And by the way, if you're listening live right now, let your people know what's going on. Let your people know that you're listening to JT. Follow me to get this set done. Let this set in real quick. I was listening right now as I talk about what's going on in life. Uh, I actually just got done watching the movie this morning. I don't want. I downloaded it live off a of one illegal movie site, which I, which whose name I do not want to release right now, simply because I have been enjoying the entertainment and I hope to attract. I have been praying to God to attract more sponsors to the podcast. And since I don't want to risk. I don't want to risk losing the podcast, but at the same time, I don't want to risk losing sponsors, but at the same time, I don't want to risk losing this movie site for recreational entertainment, so I'm going to talk about it very loosely. Um, the movie I went to go see was Moana. I went to see, uh, I, the movie I went to go see on my couch was Moana. Um, great Disney movie. I think it's Disney or Pixar. It's one of those. I think it's Disney. I think they, ain't Disney and Pixar the same thing. I don't know. All I know is I went. All I know is I watched the movie this morning. I laid on the couch and watched the movie this morning on my Samsung Galaxy S7. Here's my opinion about the movie. So, from a one to a ten, on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give the movie about a solid eight. Um, I have been learning in the last year to be less critical of kids' movies because at the end of the day, they are movies made for kids. My grown butt shouldn't be watching them. But nevertheless, I watched the movie. No, it was a great movie. I think the acting was good. I think the acting was good. I think the design, the animation in the movie was amazing. I think the character was played well. I think the only 
The only thing I didn't like about the movie, there wasn't that much I didn't like about the movie. It's a solid eight. It's a solid eight. Solid eight. It ain't as good as Logo Batman. I think Logo Batman is a solid 11, but for one, two, it's about a solid eight. Like, it ain't wow. Like, I ain't watched the movie and be like, this is the most amazing movie in the world. It did make me think, though. Hold on, let me get this set out of the way. One, two, Okay. It did make me, it did make me know one thing. When I was watching the movie, you know, because as you know, Moana, if you don't know about the movie, Moana is based in Hawaii, it's based in Polynesian culture, it's based with the main Polynesian uh, lead actress. Matter of fact, even the voice actress is Polynesian. That'll let you know how authentic they want it to be. When I think about most ethnic-centric Disney movies, when I think about Pocahontas and Moana and, Moana and Aladdin, uh, Princess and the Frog, I was really thinking like, I was thinking this is a bad but I was really thinking you know white people have done a race wrong when it ends up becoming a Disney movie that, like that's how you like if you're if your ethnic group I, they always talk about like how white people have taken over the world and done this and do that I've always said if your race ain't got a Disney movie yet then you fine because most if you compare the most races that got messed over by white people the Native Americans the Polynesians the blacks only one even the Mexicans they had that one movie um what was that one movie? It came out like four, let's see, fifth, five? That one movie came out like 10 years ago, um, Road to Del, Road to El, El, Road to El Dorado. That was the name of it. Like, if your if you're ethnic group, if your ethnic, ethnic group don't got a type of movie, it don't even got to necessarily be an oppression movie. If it ain't got a Disney movie, then yeah, y'all ain't really went through nothing yet. That's why about, that's why I give it about 15 years. It's going to be some, it's going to be some movie dedicated to Syrians coming out pretty soon. Watch. Cause right after Desert Storm, what happened right after Desert Storm? Arabia nice. But the movie was pretty good. Dwayne Johnson actually well, let me get this set up. Okay. Dwayne Johnson, actually, I used to be really skeptical of Dwayne Johnson because I know, like, for the last two, three years, he's been on this whole comedic acting performance type of gig. He actually is a pretty good comedic actor. Like, I like him. You know, like, I had criticized him. I think, I actually talked about this in the podcast. Like, I think about a year ago, I went to go see that one movie he did with Kevin Hart. CIA Central Intelligence. First off, just him, just the title that they have Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart in the movie together. That sounds funny in and of itself. It's just this big ass black, this big ass black Samoan dude with Kevin Hart. It does seem kind of weird. But I'm actually, I'm actually starting to dig him as a comedic actor. He's actually pretty talented. You know, he did, he did good. He did good at CIA. I think it was CIA or CIA. I forgot the title, but he did good at CIA. I think him and Kevin Hart have another movie that's coming out, Jumanji. And uh, both of those movies he did pretty well with. But in the in Moana, he did good. He was funny. He was charismatic. I ain't gonna lie, Loki, his character made me think about how cool it would be to have a, like a long 1980s rock star mullet. You know how that Nate 1980s rock star here that the awesome moments got? Like, like, I'm trying to grow up my hair right now, but my hair grows, you know black so so we don't it don't necessarily grow uh my hair ain't growing silky and smooth like it ain't gonna look like sugar free perm and i'm probably gonna have to put a picture up on my twitter or instagram so so those of my caucasian listeners will know who sugar free is but he was very good he did a very great role in the movie i think he was good i think he was comedically funny i think his character was funny it was interesting because I haven't really studied, growing up as a kid, you know, I was always fascinated with different mythologies of different cultures, whether it had been Polynesian culture, whether it had been Eurasian culture, whether it had been Greece culture, whether it had been Roman culture, African culture, and even, don't just not to say that all mythology in Africa are the same, okay, Nigerian culture, Asante culture. I've always been fascinated with the mythological aspects of cultures. 
And it was weird because in the movie Moana, Dwayne Johnson, in the movie Moana, James, Dwayne Johnson's playing the role of this character named Maui. He's playing the role of this character named Maui who in Polynesian culture is a really, really popular, this really, really popular character, really, really popular hero in the culture. And it's so insane to me how, like when I went on Wikipedia and actually read about the dude, I found that this dude is actually significant in all Polynesian cultures, whether it be in Hawaii, whether it be in Tahiti, whether it be in Fiji. He's significant in all the cultures. I had never known, I had never even heard his name until literally 14 hours ago. And it's just, it's just, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's just weird how you can be so. Hold on, let me get this set up. <laughs> Okay. It's just weird how you can be. It's so crazy how you can be so oblivious to a certain aspect of a person's culture. It's so, that's just amazing to me how you can go through your life learning so much about different cultures, about different worlds, all these different things about worlds and places. And because I've always considered myself a very well cultured person, not a very intelligent person, but a very cultured person. That always describes my intelligence the best is I've always been very cultured. I've always been pretty up to date about on on people's cultures and ethnicities and stuff like that. But it was weird to me to just learn about this culture, this 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 Herculean, Herculean like figure in Polynesian culture that up until like I said I had never up until now I had never heard about. So it was just fascinating, you know? You know the more you know. It inspired me so much that I almost thought it inspired me so much that I, also, I almost thought about drawing up a character about him. Matter of fact, no, I'll tell you what, let me get this. Let me get this set out. Let me get right back to you. Let me get this set out. There we go. Ah. No, the funniest thing was, craziest thing was, I was watching, um, I was watching something that had something to do with Dragon Ball Z yesterday. I forgot what it was. I don't know if it was a Dragon Ball Z movie. No, I was reading about Bardock. I was reading about Bardock, Goku's father in Dragon Ball Z, which if you're not aware about, if you don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z, then you really should turn off. You should really stop listening to my podcast because I'm going to talk about Dragon Ball Z a lot, bro. <laughs> I was reading about Bardock and I was reading about like how I didn't even know they had added this extra issue of the manga issue with Bardock where it had discussed, you know, who Goku's mother actually was. His mother was actually this very, very basic looking. Hold on. This very, this very, very ad, average, attractive Saiyan named Gini, and it was I was reading about the history of the Saiyans, about how they conquered the planet that they were on before Frieza blew them all up. <laughs> Frieza did them. Frieza did them like how we do roaches when we just bought a can of Raid from Walmart or Target. We just spray them all out. <laughs> That's how Frieza did them. That's how Frieza did the Saiyans of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I was reading about like a Bardock, how he chose to send Goku to Earth because he wanted him to be safe. He wanted him to be safe from the destruction of the Saiyans and all this stuff. And just that moment, like, I don't know, like, I never really admired how, what an amazing, what a magnificent race that the Saiyans were. You know what I mean? Like, I never, I never really took the time to admire how magnificent they were, how amazing they were with their powers, with their their personality, how they have this warrior, Spartan-inspired type of personality, the way they fight, like they're one of the strongest races in the planet. At least in the beginning of the series, because I will say it's kind of weird how, in the beginning of the series, they're like the strongest, like top, top two, 
top two baddest niggas on the playground. And then as the series progresses, you constantly encounter two races per season who are 15 times as strong as Goku or Vegeta. Like, I don't know how strong. Like, it just, I always thought that was kind of weird. Like, and that was one thing I didn't, that was one thing. Get this, hold on, let me get this set out the way. I'm gonna get back to it. One, two, And that was one aspect of Dragon Ball Z that as a kid I never really understood and I never really got was in Dragon Ball Z they will in Dragon Ball Z was so strange to me on this aspect. They would literally let a character get beat up, then have him work out for like four or five weeks straight, get super strong, beat the, whoop the character's butt, they whooped his butt, and then somehow some random character would come left field out of nowhere and beat him down like he literally just like he literally just got out the gym. Like as weak as I am in the gym right now, that's how he would treat that's how they would treat a dude in Dragon Ball Z who just worked out and went in the gravity chamber and worked out and figured out how to go Super Saiyan one and a half and all that good stuff like I need some water but I never got that I always that always seemed that always seemed unfair like I I growing up watching I never got that but once again but once again you know once again that's entertainment that's DBC but I'm saying all that to say this. The series inspired I'm saying all that to say this. The series literally inspired me so much that last night I was writing, because I'm a writer too, I'm a writer also, so I like to create stories, I like to create alien races, I like to create cartoons, I like to create bad bitches who I know I can never have sex with. <clears throat> Side note, if you ever watched that show, Foster's House of Imaginary uh, Children, Imaginary Creatures, I used to watch that show and I always wondered like, I used to watch this show and I always wonder like what would like in Foster's House of Imaginary Children it was in the, it was set in this world where it was real like the imaginary imaginary creatures that kids came up with as kids even though I never had one I just maybe I like the creativity I don't know I never had one but the creatures that they created were um were real and I always wonder like in real life let's say if this was a real life scenario let's say if this was a real life scenario that you could actually could create an imaginary creature and you would come to real life how many of them kids, imaginary creatures, would be, would be big breasted, more bigger breasted, more fatter butted versions of Beyonce, Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner? Like, if you think about it, like, how many of them would be like that? Like, just theoretically. At least one of them boys, little boys would make a little girl one. But anyway, that's not good here and I'm there. Hold on, let me get this set out the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to the conversation. <sighs> read about the DBZ culture, you know, the genealogy, the, the alien geography, all that aspects about Dragon Ball Z. It was cool because when I was reading about this stuff, I started wondering, like, what, how cool would it be? Like, what would it be like to create, like, my own sandwich? I was wondering, what would it be like to create my own sandwich? Like, what would it be like to have, like, my own sandwich to exist? You know what I mean? So, I went on this kick yesterday where I came up with these ideas for, like, my own Spartan-like, sand-like inspired race that I might put in like his own book, his own character form. I don't know. And we're gonna see what I came up with so far. And it was weird, and it was weird the way I went about creating it. And I, I don't know if I want to share my, I don't know if I want to share my magic recipe with you, but 
I got a, I got a see I got a kind of like a I got kind of like a secret recipe when it comes to creating them all. When I create my characters, when I create my Goku, when I create my Gohan, when I create my characters, I got my own little secret recipe, my own little secret spice shoot, salt and spice that I throw into the pan. But and you'll see it. You'll see it, cuz. Trust me. Trust me. When it's done, cause when it's done, you'll know. Cause I'm gonna let everybody know. But for now, just let it just stay in the fire. But I came, I came up with my own saying race. I came up with my own saying, saying characters. You know, let me go talk about. It. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put that comment right now in the um, in the podcast. Right, now. I'm gonna put that comment down. I'm gonna say, what were the coolest? What were the coolest? What were the coolest alien races or demon races? in anime or cartoons in general. Tweet me and let me know. Tweet me and let me know. My time, let's see, top five, top five, top five coolest alien races, top five coolest alien races, animated races, above all, top five alien races, animated races, above all. Sans, you know, I'm gonna say Sans, the dog demon race from Inuyasha, which is really only four people Inuyasha, Sasomaru, Sasomaru's mama, and Inu Notation. Um, um, let's see. Let me do this last set and I'm gonna tell you. Let me give you some more. Let's see. That was the one. That last set was the one. But um, I can't think of any more cool demon races or alien races. I can't think of any more cool alien or demon races that existed besides the one. I'm trying to think. Um, trying to think. The only ones, the only ones I can think of. They're coming to mind besides the same the dog demon race, at least in anime and in cartoon animation. That's key. It has to be in cartoon animations. The only other ones I can think of, let's see. Is um I don't know. I guess I'll just tell you why I like the sand and why I like the dog demon race. Why I like the sand race is because like I said, I like this. You know, like I told you, like I've always said in this podcast, and I'll tell you again, I've always been fascinated with, I've always been fascinated with mythological based culture. Like I've always, I've always been fascinated with mythological culture. I've always been fascinated with that certain aspect of culture. So I like how Sands are like this. I like how Sands are so reminiscent of Spartan culture. Like I like how you can obviously see how inspired they are by Spartan culture. I like seeing that aspect of it. So. I like that. I like the war. I like how they're like there's just this overly predatorial race. It's kind of weird because in any given light you can see them as bad guys. Really, they are bad guys, but really, they are bad guys. But I think in real life, I probably would hate them because they probably would be those kids. <laughs> it's always I always find it weird how the ki- how the people who kind of match the personality of the kids who picked on me in school in comic book form and animated form, I think they're like the coolest shit in the world. But I um but then I don't know man like it's all who my back hurt okay I think it's I'm trying to think what else I can do for back workout but uh I don't think what else I can do for back workout uh, let me say that that one that one I think I did pretty good on back. But 
let me work. I mean, well, let me Google some back workouts. You know when you be in the gym and you don't have any good workouts left, so you gotta Google good back workouts. I'm at that point right now. Last workout. Last workout. Let's say last workout. Let's see. Let's see. Back workout. Back workout. Back workout. Let's see. Bit. Mm. Okay, got some good back work. It's okay, cool. We're we're back with you now. So anyway, back to what I was saying, y'all. Was it back? Okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. Oh, they have seated cable. They have seated cable. Oh yeah, they do got seated cable. Well, okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, but so when it comes to the sand. I like, I like the, um, I like the, um, I like the, I think like I'm doing all these workouts wrong, this is the wrong one I need, something else. So I like the spark nest. I can my bad I keep getting caught up. So anyway. I like the spark nest. I like the spark nest culture of the sandwich. There we go. I like the spark nest culture of the sand race. I like I like I think that's why I always liked them growing up as I always I think that's what always had me fascinated with. With their character, with their appeal, that's what I always gave them their character to it to me. What also made them, what also made them, Okay, so I always like the I always like the sparkness culture of the sands. I always like that aspect of them. Hold on, let me get set up. Oh. So I always like the sparkness culture of the sands. So I always like that aspect of them. Um, um, really to be fair there was never much I didn't like about them <laughs> to be all the way real with you there was never much I didn't like about them I always liked the Spartanist culture I always thought they were pretty raw um, it's, not, not, it's, not, it's really not much to dispute about them it's obvious that the Sam's were the coolest characters on the show it's always pretty obvious I think also I think they're pretty I think it's pretty solidified the Sam's are pretty cool race as far as alien races and animated races go I think also one of the cool ones was the dog getting away from Inuyasha because with Inuyasha, what made them so cool was, what made Incest Shomor and Inuyasha so cool was this. But one, they looked hella cool. You know, I don't think it really, Sashomo would look hella cool. Sashomo, Inuyasha's father, and Sashomo's mother looked hella tight. They literally looked like Final Fantasy characters. And I like that kind of masculine, androgynous, beauty type of look in animated characters. I love that. So when I used to watch it growing up, 
When I watched it growing up, I was always fascinated how cool the Sherman looked. Whether it was the Prussian circle on his hand, whether it was the makeup on his hands, the claws and stuff like that. I loved how he had that flying nimbus cloak scarf, uh, spawn-like shit wrapped around him that made him float. And he, it, like, it would tell a cool, like, I always like, I always like, oh, whew, shit, I'm tired. I always like, I always like, I always thought that was like a raw. Um, Throughout the anything else, well, what made it, what else made it really significant to me? Um, let me get this next set out the way. Let me get this next set. Let, let me get this next set out the way, and then we're gonna get back to it. Mama, my mama, I need a hot mama. <sighs> Where that black girl was checking out, girl? <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Yeah, one more set on here. One more set, and I'm gonna have a kill out set, and I'm done, but. <sighs> Sorry, I've been so disorganized in the podcast. I've just been, uh, just been busy, so. So. <sighs> I guess I'm in this one right now because I'm kind of soft, tired. I promise I'm going to start the podcast again when I go eat. I'm going to go eat. Matter of fact, I'm going to go eat in this Mexican food restaurant. And I'm going to talk. I'm going to start the podcast over again when I'm eating in there. Sounds good? Thank you so much.